Hello and welcome to my TED Talk where I'm going to be showcasing a new app that I love for the Mac and iOS. Let's hop into it. So this app is called Detail. I'm able to simultaneously change between my webcam, my iPad, my iPhone, and my second iPhone all simultaneously and I'm using wireless audio from this right here. It's actually really cool to see people innovating on these new products. And this is basically a spin off of the feature that Apple recently added, which is called Continuity Camera. Continuity Camera lets you use your iPhone as a webcam for your MacBook. This is not that good of a quality camera. So being able to use something like this, something that shoots 4K is much, much better. But if you've tried out this continuity feature, you've realized that you're very limited on what you can do. You can only use one camera. I have installed on this computer the application called Detail. And Detail, how many times am I gonna say Detail application that's kind of like an OBS that lets you run a multicam and you install on all of your other iOS devices detail as well. And if you're on the same network, it's gonna automatically recognize your MacBook. And because of this, you don't even need to use a username and password. It is recommended, but you don't even have to, to at least get your cameras moving in. And with this software, I can easily just switch between these. You've seen me doing it the whole time. And it's really nice to just know I have all these different options at my disposal. And the best part is they're all wireless. Wireless video, wireless audio, and I don't have to worry about syncing these all in post. It's all being done on the fly on this timeline that you see here. Let's hop on in and see what else this program brings. Yeah, you do notice because you're on Wi-Fi, you have some chunks here and there. It does depend on your internet connection. I do have fast internet. Let's honestly go check that real quick. I've got pretty fast internet. That's just the download. Most people have fast downloads, but I've got fiber, which is gonna give you fast uploads, which is what's most important for this, especially if you're running your cameras at 4K. I will go ahead and pull up detail. I've already connected it. It knows I am on the same network as this computer, so therefore it connects automatically that way. And then right here, I can actually choose it. And it's all wireless. I can then switch to the different cameras if I want, which is really nice. And it's all on this Mac OS. I can even switch to 4K. I don't know if the front facing, oh, it does have 4K. There we go, not too shabby, and then switch back to wide. I've got this nice wireless display. I can now connect to multiple iPhones, but I can still connect to my webcam, and I can even connect to my cam link, which I have hooked up, and this is what it looks like straight out of camera, not too great, but I have some LUTs applied on OBS, which is what's giving me this, this nicer look. So if you do want to use custom LUTs like that, you can just use OBS, use the virtual camera, and it'll pop up here. It's nice that I can actually use my cam link simultaneously on two different programs. To start a recording, I first create this scene. I create a scene just by choosing which camera I want. So our scene one is simply just this cam link. And then if I want, I can go ahead and create another scene, choose my camera, choose my webcam. So now I have my webcam and then I'll go ahead and make another scene. And this one will be my iPhone. It's a beautiful view of a cord. <laughs> you can also make these combo scenes. Let's say I'm recording with my iPhone and then I want like a talking head. So look at that. Real quick, I could just be like, 
This is my Shure microphone, as you can see here. So it's, it's really intuitive. It has a lot of potential. We have options. We have filters we can use on this. If you are using log, I will say this is not gonna be the best option. You definitely wanna use something that's a little more uh, standard, something with a good amount of contrast. Because if I do add these, they are adding a look, but they're not giving me a ton of contrast like my conversion LUTs were giving. Already has a good amount of saturation and contrast. So we can actually tell what these different filters look like. I kind of like the Barcelona. It's a bit bright for my liking though. I'm sure as this program keeps developing, we'll get more options, maybe some sliders to choose how intense we want it. Honestly, that first one's even pretty good. I kind of like this one, that's not bad. Still not quite what I like here. I don't know, I like this like, now that I got the beard, I feel like this is like a Spartan look, so. I don't know, I kind of like this. So if I could eventually add LUTs, that would be really cool. But not only do we have filters, here, here this one. We also have auto framing. Auto framing is an awesome feature. It, it's more noticeable if you are zoomed in, like just a little bit. We'll go to say like 1.2 and then I can make sure now it's, it's shifting to give me looking space. So I'm now on the right of the frame, even though I have not moved at all. Say I wanna put this in the center, I'll make the zoom real dramatic, like extremely dramatic, and I can make it fast. And then you can get one of these, like what, what? And the cool thing is, <laughs> I don't have to do anything like this in post. So this is gonna save a lot of time in post. Most people have to do this head tracking. It's fairly easy these days with After Effects or DaVinci or whatever you use, but if you can just do it while you're shooting, that's even better. It's very subtle, but it's, it feels more professional. We'll leave that one on, and then what I could do is create another one with the same camera. So this could be our like reaction shot, you know? So I'll make this one fast. I'll even give it like a black and white filter. Okay, if I was to make a scene right now, I could just be like, water is really amazing. And then I could quickly switch to the other and be like, whoa, water is so good. <laughs> Please drink more water. Also wanna show y'all, you can easily reframe for portrait. Now this would help if you did this ahead of time because some of these frames are a little bit cut off. I can't really slide them over. Forward in landscape and then afterwards turn it into portrait all on this one app. It, it looks like it still tries to stay within the bounds. Like it doesn't know whenever you do the portrait that it could just technically shift the frame over. The only other way I can get myself in frame is if I zoomed in quite a bit. It still wants to keep basically a wide rectangle in this any moment i can go back and you can see all of your scenes simultaneously so say i wanted to cut maybe like right here i could cut it and then go to a different camera there even though it was filming on that one camera like i can change my mind how nice is that that is a creepy still frame <laughs> yeah that's it right there but maybe you don't want to record maybe you actually want to stream you just simply click up here and you'll type in your key as well as your url and do it that way maybe eventually they'll do a login feature now i do have the pro version so whenever i do make exports i can choose 1080p and 4k this is a free program but unfortunately you're only going to be able to do 720 say set up a podcast with two different angles on two different people and then whenever you're done simply make a portrait version of it make a landscape version and if you did this head tracking thing you wouldn't have to worry because i could go ahead and just make sure it's always centered we can also insert an image which is nice if you want to cut to for a live stream and then as well if i wanted some text I could, you know, say this is the detail review. Honestly, I don't see another option besides center. 
any other option. Oh, I think I hit max text. It was stopping me. Maybe if I make it smaller. Yeah, so you have to make your text smaller. I can't hit enter though. I'm a big graphic design snob sometimes. So that's, that's a bit of a bummer there, but it's still doable. Black or white, it's not really color, but also they have this AI transcription over here to the right that generate. Okay, so it says there was nine key moments. Let's add these magic markers to timeline. Let's see if I can now turn that into a overlying export as video. Now we can see on the right side, it is actually showing all my different things I'm saying, but what I need now is how can I put this on the video itself? Let's export it as honestly all of them. I wish it saved your place where you were at. Thankfully, I just put my folder on the left here so I can keep finding it. Another cool premium feature is I can export this as a timeline, which is what I'm gonna go ahead and do and then sync this text on there. Regardless, your AI transcription on the right is gonna really help you just find your certain place in the video, especially if you wanna make shorts. I'm gonna now hop up DaVinci and let's see what we got. File, import, timeline. Final cut timeline, hit okay. And here we are, it's on DaVinci. It is a final cut timeline, but hey, it still works. I can just take this text file, throw it on top. It looks like into the subtitle section. For right now, I think that's a great overview of what this product is. I'll definitely be making some shorts and some other scenario type videos on this because I do wanna learn it. I think this can definitely hope that. Ah. I think this can definitely help my workflow and I hope it helps you as well. Please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. It really means a lot. We're almost at 500 guys. We can do it. Until next time, peace.